how do you come up with an idea? Do you, do, do, are you inspired by something in the world, or do, do you sometimes just plan out like, oh, this is what I'm interested in, this is what I will write about? How, or is it uh, many different ways? I think Neil Gaiman's uh, standard answer to this is I have a hole in the back of the garden that I can go out and dig in and get ideas whenever I need to. <laughs> um, I, I never know how to answer those questions because mm. n nothing is ever one thing. It's mm. accumulation of any number of things, ideas, images, and experiences that come together in a way that I didn't expect them to. Often the play, I, I, in fact, always the play I think I'm sitting down to write is not the play I end up writing. Something mm -hmm. else happens in that process. I mean, in, with Kill Me Now, for example, the latest one, I mean, I had just written a play about five women going through menopause called Five at 50, uh, dealing with their concerns. So often, whatever I've just write, written, I want to write the exact opposite when I do the next thing. So I knew it would be male-oriented mm -hmm. rather than female-oriented. I wanted it to be a family story. I'd been through my stenosis. I wanted it to be about uh, the possibilities of disability. And more than that, I wanted to write about um, the right to choose our own death and mm -hmm. the way we live and the way we die. And that's based on... Um, seeing my grandmother die horribly in an, uh, an extended care home because she was uh, treated improperly and basically suffering to the end of her life and having no other choice, of having met people in my family who deal with mental or physical disabilities that uh, make their lives very difficult, and also, you know, my own questions when I was dealing with the stenosis about if, if, I, if this is going to be my life, how long do I want it to be? because I certainly didn't want it to be another 30 or 40 years at that point. So those ideas come together, but then I read a story about a guy who had a disabled son who couldn't masturbate. And he had written to the star, to the ethics uh, columnist or whatever, saying, you know, he, he, he doesn't like his mother to see him naked. I've talked to him about sex workers. He's horrified by the idea. He's making it clear in an unspoken fashion that he would like me to masturbate him. And as his father, I don't know what to do. And I thought, now there's a conundrum, right? Now there's an issue. What do you do with that? Yeah. No, but it is, it is accumulation of things. It's never just one thing. Like I said with Remains, you know, I'm writing mm -hmm. a, a play I think is about seven friends looking for love, mm -hmm. and then this story uh, about the girl being found murdered happens, and mm -hmm. it changes the whole direction of the play because it fits right into it, right? So that mm -hmm. idea that... Um, there's any one thing that triggers a play as opposed to myriad things, many of which I don't even recognize until years later when I'm reading it or looking at it and I go, oh yeah, that really relates directly to that and I wasn't even conscious when I did it. Mm. Do you outline or do you just write freehand? I, I outline in my head mm -hmm. and I outline while I'm writing. Like once I start writing, I find I really start outlining because other ideas start to come to me and I have to put them down and put mm -hmm. them in some kind of order. But the idea of putting an entire outline together before I've started the project uh, kind of makes me go, why write it? Mm -hmm. you know, you, you, film, scripts I do, film scripts I will do, particularly if it's an adaptation of someone else's work or a novel or a play or something like that, mm -hmm. I will definitely outline it. But for plays, no, although I do carry a fairly strong outline around in my head. Uh, do you ever get writer's block? And what do you do if you get it? I don't think of it as writer's block. I think of it as drinking time. I don't... Um, I don't think of myself as being blocked, and I'm kidding when I say drinking time, it could be also sex time, it could be partying time, it could be go to the zoo time, it could be hang out with the kids time. Mm -hmm. What it is, 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 is my brain, my creativity is telling me you are not full enough yet to start to channel this stuff out of yourself, so you need to be full more, you need something else going on, you need to feed yourself something more before this will come out, and I go, okay, then that's the case, then I won't write, and I will go and live, and when I need to write, then I will sit down and I will do it. Uh, what was a, uh, like either a scene or like an ending or an act or something where you're just struggling with it, and you just, it was one of the hardest thing to do, and then like you had a eureka moment. Was there, have you ever had one of those that was like, Oh, God damn it, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. And then you just go, oh, Yeah, I, I, I have those all the time. In fact, I have them so often, I couldn't really pick one out. I mean, right. I couldn't really go, that was the one. Because for me, that's what the process is. The process is that, that um, combination of, of, of technique and discipline, mm -hmm. of sitting down and having to do it even if it's not there. And then those eureka moments, those moments of inspiration, those moments of 
oh yeah, that's what it is. And those always happen when I'm in it, mm -hmm. right? So I, it's not when I'm sitting around thinking about it, although once in a while I will solve a big problem in the shower. It's almost always in the shower and I'll be thinking about something different and then it will twig, that is the answer to what I was looking for, for that thing, right?